We taped Carrie Stratton conducting on a balmy October day, just two days after his 39th birthday. The North York Symphony and the Amadeus Choir of Scarborough were rehearsing for a Hard and Stroke Benefit concert held the next day at the Royal Alexandra Theatre. Stratton, a native of Belleville, is currently conductor and music director of the North York Symphony. Concert soloist with the world's leading orchestras, Maureen Forrester, says Mr. Stratton has the ability to control his orchestra and yet maintain an excellent rapport with all its individual members. The rapport was evident at rehearsal. Principal cellist David Miller says he likes working under Stratton. The orchestra was ready for some new beginnings, as it were, and everybody really liked his exuberance and personality, and so it's been a pleasure to work with him. And the orchestra has really developed in the last couple of years. Stratton and his three-year-old son, Nicholas, were visiting Carrie's mother, Jean Stratton. We spoke with them at her home in Belleville. Stratton was one of four Canadians who worked on completing a list work from 1834. I mean, Stratton conducted the Hungarian there, State Orchestra for the recording. A, a new concerto by, uh, by Liszt, the uh, De Profundis. Uh, I say concerto, and of course it, it is in, in very much in that form. It's, Liszt called it an instrumental psalm, and uh, he used um, uh, the psalm which begins, Out of the depths I cry unto the Lord. Uh, see, Liszt was never quite able to make up his mind if he wanted to be a priest or a womanizer. So I think he decided to be both. And uh, at one of his more religious periods, uh, he came up with this. I think it's a piece that should be in the repertoire. And we'll see once the uh, uh, compact disc is uh, released this month um, what the reaction is. And hopefully uh, orchestras will want to engage uh, Philip Thompson, who was the pianist, and Michael Maxwell, who made the discovery and finished the piece and added his own uh, inimitable style to the, uh, uh, the coda, which had to be uh, concluded. Stratton says music isn't a cure-all for the world's ills, but he says countries' identities are established through many things, including the arts. I'm not quite so Pollyanna that, uh, uh, that I, can, I believe that music is the answer, but uh, I think uh, it's a culture, uh, or rather a country without a culture, is a country with no identity at all. If we, it's not just music. We have to have libraries, we have to have theaters, we have to have uh, all the things that identify us for who we are, and that includes television stations. They, uh, for better or ill, help identify us. But he says many countries, musicians and orchestras are losing their individual styles. It used to be that you could tell a French orchestra from an American orchestra within a few bars, but the world is becoming international now. The world is becoming McDonald's and blue jeans and American films wherever you go. And a, uh, an international culture is, uh, has sprung upon us, and uh, the, can, the orchestras sound the same. The instrumentalists that used to be different sound the same now. Um, they all, we all, apparently, uh, around the world aspire to McDonald's and, and blue jeans and American films and this certain sort of international blandness that, uh, that seems to be taking over. So uh, I would say more importantly than did the countries have their own flavor, though the teachers each had their own flavor. Stratton says he continues to learn from other conductors, even while listening to old recordings. Uh, I think the work of uh, Willem Furtwängler, the uh, German conductor, uh, who has been uh, dead some years now, uh, is exemplary conductor, marvelous. I'm, I'm very inspired when I listen to those old recordings. You know, I find people don't don't uh, listen to them because uh, it may be that they're not the newest or not the slickest. Uh, they have surface noise or they were recorded in 1939 and, and they want the, uh, the latest thing. But I'm not interested in necessarily the latest thing, just the best. And uh, I enjoy Fort Fangler's work and uh, Thomas Beecham. Uh, today, I, I think um, Giulini is a brilliant conductor and there are some young, uh, young Scandinavians who are coming along who are very, very fine. So I have lots of, uh, lots of conductors I admire, certainly no favorite. Stratton enjoys teaching conducting one-on-one, -on -one, but he says some things must be inherent. You can't teach player and you can't teach flamboyance. If they come and ask me, how do I start afternoon of a fawn, then I know I have a student. All right, that's an intelligent question. Um, if they come and say, <laughs> show me that thing where you threw your head and cued the horns. I don't know. I have no idea in the heat of battle what the, what the stick is doing. I only know that we've rehearsed this well and that, this, you know, things will work. Um, there's a difference. There's a difference. Um, I would go to teach you the next thing that comes to that. You can't teach before I don't know. 
They come to me for, for hardware. That's what they come for, for hardware. Um, and I can give them all the hardware they want, but they have to build it. They have to build it after that. I can't be there. Stratton wishes there was a list of our shelves for audiences. If I could wish anything for audiences, it would be that they would get a kind of list of, of ten commands. Uh, that, you know, and I, I don't know where I would begin. The first, I guess, would be for ladies, thou shalt not snap and unsnap thy purse. All right? And, and thou shalt not bring the little candies with the cellophane, because it sounds like a three-alarm fire going off. Uh, we, we work so hard to practice these things, and here are these tiny crackling, you know, going on in the background. And they don't just take it out. They stretch it out over a long period of time, so that you want to turn around and say, would you like some help with that? Um, thou shalt not talk. <laughs> you know, really, I mean, why come? Why be there if you want to talk? Humming along, I paid once a very good price to hear Magic Flute, which is something I've seen many times, conducted once. Uh, I love it a lot. I know all the tunes, too, but I don't want to sit next to somebody who's humming along or singing, uh, singing the wrong lyrics. Uh, you know, that, that's annoying. That, that's terrible. But he says he probably shouldn't complain because it's difficult to fill a hall with live audiences in the 90s. He says the electronic availability of music has been its downfall. It doesn't matter what you listen to. Uh, wouldn't you really rather hear that individual that you enjoy listening to so much alive? This is an art form that goes from one human being to another, not from a speaker to a human being. That's secondhand. That's like carrying on a love affair over the phone. I suppose it can be done, but I personally would like to hug the girl. Stratton says to build audience numbers for live performances, the young must be educated about music. He loves giving children's concerts. Yes, we give children's concerts. I love it. Uh, they're great. And they ask the best questions, you know. It's, uh, oh. Uh, some conductors, uh, some of my colleagues, won't do children's concerts. Or they have somebody, uh, an assistant, who comes in and does those kind of things. And they are missing out. But they ask him, what's on the bow, anyhow? Uh, why, why do you move your arms like that? What's he doing when, when, he, when he does this with his hand? And, um, what is it? Do you just blow air through the trumpet? It was one of my favorites. And that gave, gave rise to the trumpet player at the time to stand up and show them that he did it. And said, the trumpet's not the instrument. I'm the instrument. <laughs> and it's true, you know. It's, it's very true. He is the instrument. The trumpet's there to amplify his ability to make this embouchure and to, and to make the music go. It, it was marvelous. I, I love that. My colleagues who don't play to children are missing out. They're really missing out on, on the, uh, the essential kernel of what makes us do this in the first place. Stratton says he was fortunate to have had Doug Eisenstein as his high school music teacher and Marion Stratton for his violin teacher. Um, Doug Asseltine was very, very good to me uh, in that he let me conduct for a year before I went, uh, before I went to McGill. I had an opportunity to conduct literally every school week, so that by the time I went to, uh, to university, um, there were certain things that need not be, uh, you know, gone over. Uh, so it was, it was Dan, he said, well, obviously you can do this and this and this, and I have to show you how to do this and that. And uh, that helped me because I was admitted to the second year of the conducting program. Uh, where would I have been without Marion? Marion Stratton, my gosh. That, that would have been just no story at all to, to tell about if she hadn't been here. I often think uh, how remarkably uh, lucky. What a coincidence. Uh, a wonderful, uh, you know, sort of alignment of the stars that I should have the opportunity to study with a musician as, uh, as fine as Marion. Because if she hadn't been here, I really don't know what, what would have happened. The first orchestra Stratton played his violin with was the first orchestra he ever heard, the Eastern Ontario Concert Orchestra of Belleville. He also conducted the group after the death of its founder and conductor, Stephen Choma. Stratton has conducted a number of orchestras in Canada, the United States, and in Europe. Stratton's father passed away a year ago. His mother, Jean Stratton, says they weren't surprised at their son's success. You know, he changed his mind about instruments so many times when he was small. You know, the drums and the ukulele and the banjo and everything. And then when he finally said violin, well, um, then we started to think, well, maybe he is serious about music, you know. And uh, but we're very, we were very proud, and I'm very proud of his accomplishment. And he's worked very hard to get where he is today. Stratton says if you want to pursue any of the arts for a vocation, you must have a strong desire to succeed. 
it, the only way I would advise anyone to go into, into the arts anywhere in the world is if you are absolutely sure that you cannot live without it. If you can live without it, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a lot of heartache. Stratton says music is his bread and butter. He loves his work. I, I love doing what I do. If I could wish for anybody else, anything, it would be, may you get as much pleasure from your job as I get from mine. Stratton says contentment comes from within, and he seems to pass his good feelings along to his audiences.